Welcome back, everybody. Monday morning edition of Hot Mike Rolls On, final half hour of the show. Busy Monday. We mentioned here just a couple minutes ago on our best of the weekend, capped off last night by West Fargo native Matt Strom being uh, announced as a member of the National League All-Star team at the All-Star game that will take place at Globe Life Park in Arlington, Texas, next Tuesday night. The man who found him out of West Fargo is our next guest, a pretty legendary baseball coach. Uh, from Neosho County Community College. Uh, Steve Murray joins us here uh, this morning, and you got to be over the moon. You've had some dynamite baseball players come through, but the first question I have, and I don't know this one, is how you found Matt. Give us the background on how West Fargo, North Dakota, ends up in your backyard. Well, I'd like to be able to take credit for that, but I can't. My assistant coach at the time, Mike Sadler, was at a Kansas University showcase. And this skinny kid from <laughs> North Dakota walks in and left-handed arm, you know, he hits 78 to 82. And we think, man, we could develop that, feed the kid a few sandwiches and maybe, you know, it'll be something. And, uh, you know, the rest is kind of history, but it wasn't always smooth sailing for Matt. But, uh, you know, that kid, he's made it big, and we're super proud of him. How did you sell it to him, Steve, on how we can develop you to get to Division One baseball and eventually the major leagues? Well, the kid was super hungry, uh, comes from a super family, and was looking for a chance to head south and pitch where it wasn't snowing. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he jumped at the chance, and, you know, it, the rest is history. And then we had a pipeline after him. That's been wonderful too. And, you know, we're kind of fond of your state, so <laughs> it's all good. I'll get to that in a second. We, we have some, uh, I found some photos of him pitching for, for you guys. I, I saw him pitch in high school here. He, and you're right. He's skinny. So when you saw the, the, the prototype there, you saw the body, what did you say? Okay. He's left-handed and he's got good command. That's gotta be like a and B right on your checkoff list. Right. Correct. And now we, if we add C, which is velo, and D, which is the mental game, mm. you know, we have something. And Matt was more than willing to work. Trust me, that kid works harder than probably anybody you can name. And uh, he just did a bang up job. When did you get the sense, like, okay, he's developed? Like, when did you see the velo rise? How early on in his time there with you did that start to happen? Well, <laughs> funny you say that because he touched 84 at that showcase and he came in here in the very first outing he was 78 miles an hour and i he has like 10 million views on some <laughs> podcast telling this story uh now i get to tell it the way i saw it but i brought him <laughs> in the office and i said dude we're wasting time here if you're not gonna get after it a little bit you know what i mean and he totally understood that he was pitching tentative and the next outing, he was all of a sudden 82. The next outing, he literally went 84. We're still in the fall, went to 86. Then all of a sudden, at the end of the fall, he was hitting 88, got after it in the weight room, and then sat 90 that whole freshman year. Wow. Uh, you know, I think the hardest we ever got him here was 94 to 95. Uh, but, you know, like I say, that kid is an endless worker. And doesn't matter if it's the weight room, didn't matter if it was conditioning, didn't matter if it was on the field in the bullpen, that kid was going to work and work hard. You're around this all the time. So how difficult was the, was it a decision at all, really, when he gets drafted about either I'm going to go professionally, I want to go the college route, because I, that was an opportunity there as well. Yeah. And, you know, the funny thing is most coaches do it selfishly and they want the kid to stay in college. Whereas my thought is the younger you can get into the game, the, the more chance you have. If you're 23 and I'm 18, I'm going to get a better shot than you are. And so, you know, we encourage Matt, do what you need to do, but this is your dream. What are you waiting for? Yeah. Go. Got a hundred thousand dollar signing bonus too, which doesn't hurt either from, from Kansas city uh, to see him rapidly ascend as well. Steve, as you're following it, because I know you're, you do that with all of your, your former guys. What stood out to you about his rise through the minors and then when he got called up in 2016? Well, I mean, the kid just continually got better, but injuries kept jumping in his way. Yeah. And everybody said, well, that's going to be the end of him. And I said, no, dude, you don't understand this kid's work ethic. And sure enough, his work ethic proved right. And, uh, you know, he has something that's different. Some kids have velocity. Some kids have 
major secondary stuff. Matt just has what's called swing and miss stuff and that you don't see it very often, you know? And so he's four or five miles an hour less than another guy, but his movement and what have you is, is spectacular. And that is why he gets so many swings and misses. So, you know, again, he wasn't going to lose out because of his mental. He wasn't going to lose out because of his conditioning. Uh, you know, they were going to have to pull the jersey off his back. So I didn't have any <laughs> doubt the dude was going to make it. I have an email to ask you to ask the coach, did you know he had a fondness for baseball cars at Neosho? Was that there or did that develop later? I think that might have developed later. You know, I mean, Matt had a fondness for hunting. Yep. And a fondness for his wife when he was here. And other than that, it was all baseball, you know. <laughs> to see him now as a reliever, and that's where he's emerged. But it, originally, he was a starter. Tell me about his stuff as a starter. What made him such a, a really dominant pitcher as a as a starting pitcher? Well, it was funny because he had a four-pitch mix when he was here. Uh, he had a fantastic pickoff move when he was here. They, as soon as he got to the pros and had Salvi Perez as his catcher, they told him nix the, the, the pickoff move. And they said, get rid of your changeup. And I'm like, oh, hold on. That's like a plus pitch. And uh, kind of get rid of your curveball. So now he's a two-pitch guy that's in relief. Uh, if he does start like he had done, you know, previous to this, he adds his changeup back in, which is a very good pitch. And, uh, you know, but right now he's just concentrating on those two pitches. And, uh, obviously, there's some variations from his fastball cutter and, you know, what have you. So, uh, but he's made it all work. Give me your reaction when you found out he was an all-star last night. Uh, I was super excited. He had told me, you know, previous to that, keep your mouth shut, literally. Uh, <laughs> but wait for the league to announce it. But uh, that was a very cool moment. And Matt and I text all the time, daily. And, uh you know, I've never brought up the all-star thing to him, but all along the season, I'm watching and watching. I'm thinking, you know, that dude's got a shot at making this all-star team. The only thing against him is, you know, he's a, a reliever that throws the seventh inning and not a closer. But when he got the call, I thought that's just spectacular. So you've been sitting on this for a while? Is this like the hardest? Where's this rank for secrets for you? How long have you had to keep this one? <laughs> well, I only sat on it for about five hours and, you know, <laughs> Uh, that was a tough sit, but I was super excited to uh, <laughs> see when the announcement finally came. I know so. baseball people certainly know your program. Why has it been so successful? Tell me about why your program has been has been able to produce the amount of major league talent you have. Well, I truly think that it's we have very good assistant coaches. We have very good players that are good people, and then we just develop them uh, – you know, not only as a baseball player, but as a human being. And we show them, you know, the Matt Strom success stories. This could be you. We're not guaranteeing anything, but you have to do things right. And, you know, it's not a program for everybody, but it is a program for the guy that wants to come in and work hard and see how far it can go. I know Andy Young mentioned you several times. That's another West Fargo guy that went and played at your program. Alex Erlob, who's another West Fargo guy that's coming back shortly then to North Dakota State next year. Cam Blazik's another one that's come down there. How much has Matt laid the foundation for you to have a basically a pipeline from North Dakota down there? A hundred percent. And it's his family, too. Uh, you know, we all got along. We, we get along with our players extremely well. And, you know, if a kid has success, he certainly wants his buddies or people he knows to come, you know, this way, too. But that, that works two ways. They also know if the kid's a turd or the kid doesn't work hard, they're not giving me his name. And, you know, uh, we've had great success with your state. We love every kid and family. I got I to gotta say that the family joining in with those kids is massive. Mm -hmm. And we see it as much in the North Dakota kids as we do in the Kansas kids. And so it's pretty cool. I want to ask about talent-wise as well. Where do you see out of the North Dakota talent? Granted, the season isn't as long. How has that changed even from when you got Matt to more recent guys that have come through your, your program? In all honesty, they're a little less worn down, uh, which is kind of a neat thing because with all the injuries and things that happen now, a lot of it's overuse. And to be dead honest with you, in North Dakota, the weather doesn't provide them to be overused. And 
We've also now, we know certain coaches down there that you can 100% trust their word and trust how they're, you know, doing with their kids and that. And, uh, you know, we know we have the right mix. I really appreciate the time here. So uh, before I let you go, do you recognize him now with the super long hair? I mean, he hasn't cut it in, <laughs> what, seven years or something crazy like that. You know, I still give him crap about it a lot. <laughs> And uh, somebody said, well, why don't you tell him to cut it? And I said, dude, the guy makes seven and a half million dollars. He isn't going to listen to some fat, bald coach anymore, you know. Uh, but, you know, that's kind of his M.O. And, you know, I've gotten used to it, to be dead honest. Our program has short hair rule. And I don't know that he's cut it since he left. Here. <laughs> I don't but, think so. You know, yeah, I don't think I don't so. either. And, you know, that's kind of what he does. And. You know, hey, it works for him, so go for it. I know he, he was, he's a quiet guy. Was he, Is he that way playing as well? Was he was he quiet? No, no. Uh, <laughs> and he's not quiet. Uh, Matt's very outspoken. Matt will tell you exactly what's on his mind, which is why I like him. Uh, you know, the kid will – he'll discuss anything, but he's not going to give in to anybody. And, you know, you see sometimes on Twitter and he'll answer somebody, and I'm just like, oh, Matt. <laughs> Stop. You know what I mean? But that's what I love about him. He'll argue with you, uh, you know, and he's a very intelligent kid, too. So uh, I enjoy talking to him. And like I say, he's not nearly as quiet as people think. He gets along super with people. Um, and he always has. He always has. Just a wonderful kid to be around. My last question. Have you given him any – I know you give him feedback pitching-wise. Have you given him feedback on how his TV show is going? Have you given him any of that? No, but I, you know, to be honest with you, I watch all those, and I'm I'm kind of super surprised at the following yeah. that he gets because of that. I and they're guys old like me, you know, that are still into cards, and I'm like, dang, I kind of wish I'd have had all those cards that I put on my spokes back yeah, in the right? day. I'd probably be rich rather than <laughs> sitting here eating a sandwich, you know. <laughs> this was great, Coach. I really appreciate the time on short notice. Congratulations on another. Uh, fantastic season, and uh, we'll see. I'm sure there's a couple more coming down the pipeline we can send your way, okay? We hope so. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Steve Murray, head coach at Neosho uh, County Community College uh, in Kansas. And I'm just looking at this, by the way, of the major leaguers that have gone through there. It's ridiculous. Even the guys that are playing uh, even independent ball. Alex Newbar from Fargo South. Now the all-time closer uh, record holder for the Red Hawks. He's a Neosho guy. Uh, I forgot that, along with the guys I mentioned uh, in our interview uh, with Coach Murray. It's Blazik was through there in 2020. Uh, Andy Young was through there uh, a couple years prior to that uh, in 2014 before he got drafted by uh, the Cardinals and went on. And we know uh, him making the majors playing with the Cardinals and the Diamondbacks. Uh, obviously, Matt was there in 2012, and Tanner Dahl, another guy who played for the Bison, uh, through there. So it's a uh, that is a baseball pipeline. It's a baseball powerhouse, and uh, to see I, Matt was not the biggest guy, and the great story there about how he increased his velocity just through hard work, and now look at throwing mid 90s and going to be with baseball's best. That'll be a really neat deal. Like we mentioned this with Cody Malk when he got introduced on the NBC, the the Sunday night game, you know, from Hankinson, North Dakota. They have that from, you know, from the Philadelphia Phillies, Matt Straub. That's going to be pretty cool. Looking forward to that. We'll have much more coverage on that later this week and early next week before the All-Star game, which is a week from tomorrow in uh, Arlington.